Psalms one, chapter 140. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plant evil things in their hearts, who continually gather together their work. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. They poison of aspids under their lips. Keep me away from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purposed to make my steps stumble. Their God has given a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set trap to me. I said to the Lord, You are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Look to cover a hide in the day of battle. Do not grant O Lord the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked plea. Lest they be exalted. As the head of those who surround you, let the evil of their wicked looks cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil haunt the mountains and over their land. I know the, that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father God, for giving me this opportunity to be able to speak this from your word but Father God. I pray, Lord, for you, Father God, who watches us, Lord Father God, is doing well at home, Lord Jesus, and, and safe and healthy, Lord Father God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you give me the strength and the wisdom, Lord Jesus, to be able to deliver your word the way that you want me to deliver it, oh, Lord Father God. Help me, Lord Jesus, to be able to get the right wording, Lord Father God, and that everything will go smoothly, Lord Jesus, and that you can your name, Father God. I ask all these things. So, the chapter, when you read through it at a first glance, it's talking about God protecting us against our enemies, protection from our enemies. And as you can see in verse 7, it says, Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. But our battle isn't physical, per se. Right now, our, our battle in the world currently is on a microscopic level. And so when we're asking God to cover our heads in the day of battle, we're not saying our physical heads. We're asking for God to protect us spiritually because there are so many things going on around us that we don't see everything. We don't see the things that are going on ahead of us, the things that are going to happen. It's only when we look at it from hindsight that we see the ways that God has protected us. The first verse of the chapter starts off by saying, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Perceive me, preserve me from the violent man. What's the difference between an evil man and a violent man? A violent man does, isn't just thinking evil thoughts in his heart. He then takes those things and he acts upon it, making them violent. An evil man is just someone who is <laughs> plotting evil or has evil in their heart. So it's very easy for someone to go from being an evil person to a violent person. It, the psalmist goes on to say, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. They both do that. Both the evil man and the violent man imagine mischievous things in their heart and they gather for war. A spiritual warfare is what's going on. They are thinking all these evil thoughts in their head, in their hearts. And Satan sees those things. And there are people around us that say, oh, yeah, I do these things. But in reality, they don't. They're two-faced in a way. They show us one side, but in reality, they're 
they have a completely other persona to them. Even in the book, they, people do look, they say they, yeah, the book. Yeah, they do one thing. They, they say good things and do good things on the outside. But on the inside, they're evil and they're being hurtful to others. And they keep and he he keeps going and says their tongues are sharper are sharp like serpents, like adders poison. That's what's under their lips. Deceit, yeah. Poison is like deceit. Deceit. Deceit is poison. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent man who have pursued, who have purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have hid snares for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set gins for me. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my supplication, O Lord. The psalmist keeps on going and says, They're doing all these things, but Lord, keep me, preserve me from the things that they're perp that these violent men, these wicked, evil men are plotting against me. They hide these things, these snares, these traps, these nets by the wayside, by the side. And they're, they're sending these evil spirits in context. That's what a jinn is, an evil spirit. To harm the to harm us and so we're we're saying God you're my God hear my voice hear my supplication and protect me put a hedge around me protect my head in the day of battle grant not O Lord the desires of the wicked don't let their plans come into fruition. Let not an evil speaker be established in the earth. Evil shall hunt the violent man and overthrow him. In the end, the evil is going to come back to the person who devised it. And it's going to, in the end, harm them. Because even though we do get hurt by this, the things that they plot against us, it doesn't really hurt. It's like getting a paper cut. It doesn't really hurt. It's not like, well, yes, it does get, it does hurt and it does sting, but it's not that bad. Compared to something else that could potentially be far more devastating and far more deadly. Saying these attacks, when they attack you, it's not going to be that bad because God's protecting you. Yes. The last two verses says, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and the right of the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks unto thy name. The upright shall dwell in thy presence. Verse 13 is similar to verse six of Psalms 23. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here again, it talks about righteousness and dwelling in the presence of God. Because God is always with us, 
he's always hearing us. We might not see it, but he hears us. And he's always going to shield us and protect us. In good times, there will be four feet walking. But in bad, there's only going to be two. Because you're not the one walking. It's God walking for you because your feet are on top of his feet. It's like guiding a child to walk and they've got their feet on yours and you're, help, you're showing them how to walk. In good times, God's going to be right behind you, guiding you. But in bad, he's going to be the one to go through it, not you. It might still hurt, but it doesn't hurt as much. Because God's protecting you. Because God's protecting you. Protecting you not only from the evil people that devise things against you, but the things that devil has planned for you as well. And so what we need to remember is that we need to constantly dwell in his presence. Dwell in the presence of God so that we can understand and know his will and his purpose for our lives. So that we can fully grasp what he's doing for us even though we don't see it in a, in that moment when we look at hindsight we see